Yo, what's good, you too? This is Jay from TNJ. So make sure you hit that like button. Back for more Seattle Mariners. We're going to try to get to the All-Star game here in this episode. 38 days away. Let's just see where we land here and see what is the deal. All-Star voting. So, well, we're doing pretty good with the All-Star voting. Carlos Rodon is actually our best pitcher uh, in all-star voting. I'm, I'm pretty surprised at that. Rodon actually having a good bounce back year. Remember last year he only had a 142 which whip, which is below average. 414 ERA. He actually didn't have a terrible strikeout to walk ratio, but he had a 197, which was a career high for him, I think. And he actually walked 72. So he actually gave up a, a career high home runs of 34, though. So that's probably what did it there. Omar Nervaez is leading in the AL All-Star voting at catcher way ahead of Jorge Alfaro and just looking at him one or three two nine average I mean just this guy is just hitting amazing in simming and last year he hit 316 having a bounce back year from season two and look at this I mean three years he's been with us hit over 300 he's about to do it again he's actually OPS at a thousand wow Nobody else is actually in the top two except Andrew McCutcheon, who's hitting 282. And just looking at him, he is having a great season. Did he make, even make the all-star team last year? It seemed like he would have because his average is way lower than last year. And he hit 300 last year. That's, that's pretty good. That's a career year for him. All right, back to the action. Let's get through this month. And in the first one, we're up. Two home runs for Kutch already in this one versus the Houston Astros. Are we at home? No, I think we're actually on the road. I think we can hit this third home run if we get it to left field. Let's get over that short wall. Let's see. All right, Kutch, what do you have? Two for four, two home runs, four RBIs. This offense is just hot to start this season. And, man, this might be our best team yet. And we are going to hit a deep fly ball to right field, but... Looks like that is a can of corn. That's an out. Wow. Bruh. So the Astros come all the way back and win this one in the bottom of the ninth inning. Wow. They score five runs. Let's just see. What did they score there in that last inning? Wow. They did. They scored five runs to win it in the bottom of the ninth. Amazing. Kirby Yates, five earned runs. Wow. Gave up five hits. That is just amazing. All right, so let's see if we can recover from that loss. So, wow, down in this one. Paul DeYoung, 10-game hitting streak. I'm not going to try to keep that one alive. Let's see if he can do it himself. Oh, and we do get the victory. So we come back on them as they just came back on us. So we do end up splitting with Houston, and we move on to the Texas series 9-2. to two. He needs a triple to hit for the cycle. I don't know if he can get this, but he's 4-4 four for four in this game. I, I think I might try to get this one just to see if I can get to 5-5 five for five at least. So, wow, Paul DeYoung's average is up to 313 now. So he jumped from 280 in the last episode to 313 in this one. Oh, and he hits one down the right field line. I'm just going three no matter what. No, I'm kidding. I'm going to first. And that is a single. Five for five on the first pitch. And that is actually really, really good. And Paul DeYoung, man, having himself another great year. I mean, in that first season, he had a great year as well. But definitely turning things around. All right, so we do end up winning this one 9-2. to two. Kluber gets the win, I believe, because he was just shaking that guy's hand. And, yep, he does. 5-for-5 five five for Paul DeYoung. Kluber goes eight innings. Great win. So I am actually liking this style in the franchise. Let me know what you guys think. I know some of you guys said that you guys like this, and I do too. I mean, I like how Mr. Hurricane runs his Madden series. I don't know if you guys follow him at all, but... This is kind of what I want to do in this series. I want to get through many seasons because, you know, I did say I wanted to get through a lot of seasons in this and just to see how our guys do. So we are in a situation here, one nothing going into the ninth inning and Kirby Yates finally holds on to that one. And look at us. We are beating the Astros down. I'm not sure if we won that last game. Let's just see. Uh, let's just stop simulating. And yet we did. Oh, what is going on? Okay, so we did actually end up splitting. Actually, we swept the Houston Astros at home then we actually won two of three versus the Rangers at home as well 46 and 22 that is definitely the best start that we've had here in this series let's just see so we are 10 and a half games up on the athletics wow I mean this is just amazing we're actually 27th in defense and 24 ranked in speed that's 
That's not surprising because Malik Smith is the only fast guy on our roster right now. But, man, I'm, I just want to see what our guys are doing hitting the ball because Omar Nevaez definitely hitting over 300. I mean, that's no surprise there. You know, let's look at a couple of minor leaguers here. Richie Lopez is a guy that we drafted last season. 72 overall, C potential, only hitting 182, but he's at oh, 165. He's at uh, AAA. I don't know why he's at AAA. Why do they have him at AAA? I have to fix that. So Tim Beckham's hitting 271, just about where he's been hitting this entire series, but he's just been clutch for us. So yeah, that's pretty surprising because, you know, you would think the way that, you know, I kind of edit my episodes and even show him, he's always clutch. Only hitting 271, but Paul DeYoung, man, 312. Marvin Gonzalez, 307. JP Crawford, look at him. Just struggling here. He's 27 years old. Some of you guys have suggested that I should trade him because he's at 27. And he's only went up about five overall in this entire franchise over the last four years. And it doesn't seem like he's progressing at a fast rate, even though he's a potential. Might be time to unload him. You guys did actually say Santana as well, but look at him now. 303. So that's actually not bad. McCutcheon hitting 293. What a signing this was. We signed him to a one-year $5 million deal. Man, it's looking like a bargain right now. But the only thing about McCutcheon right now is I'm afraid that if I do re-sign him to another deal, all of a sudden he's just going to plummet. That happens quite a bit in this game. You think you have lightning in a bottle. You try to keep get, keep it going, and they just decline. Jared Kalenic is hitting 281 at AAA. It could be time to bring him up. I don't know, but he's hitting pretty well. We did re-sign him to a longer deal, so... I don't know. We'll have to see. Malik Smith hitting 306. So finally, Malik Smith is hitting the way I thought he should have hit in the beginning of this franchise. He's at 83 overall, a potential, still 28, doing pretty well. He's only got six stolen bases. How is that even possible? And then last but not least, Yelich and Uibiyashi. We signed Yelich to a five year deal, I believe that was, and he is only hitting 259. He did come off a season where he hit 260, so. We definitely want to see some improvement there. He's 30 years old as well. Uibiyashi is still in his mid-20s, and he's only hitting 248. He's just a home run hitter, it seems like. 14 home runs up to this point. 60 strikeouts, though. That's pretty high. All right, I'd say we have actually a not an easy uh, month of June, but a little lighter because, look, we play Baltimore, who's 18-50, and 50, Boston, who's 39-28. They're not the same Boston, but they're still good. Cincinnati, 31-36, and 36, and Pittsburgh who's barely over 500. So let's get through this. So we do win two in a row versus Baltimore. About to win three here in this situation. We win our third one, and we sweep them. So we win four straight versus the o Orioles. And here's our nemesis here in this, uh, fran in, in this franchise here. And the Red Sox, they just always seem to beat us. Santana's on a 10-game hitting streak, and I don't know if he still continued it, but we are just going to move along here. So we are in a pretty... Wow, this is actually a nice situation here. Paul DeYoung had to play 0 for 4. Remember, he's hitting over 300. Yelich and Malik Smith, first and second. Malik Smith has got 90 speeds. So let's hop into this one. All right, let's see what he can do versus Tyler Thornburg. We do have Malik Smith at second. They're going to try to pick him off, and that's just stupid. I hate when that happens. You just take one step, and they throw the second. I hate that. Oh, and he does hit one up the middle, and that one is going to sneak through the infield. And actually moving Yelich over to third base on that one. Dang, I should have probably went to second on that with Paul DeYoung. But we do tie it up at eight apiece. Guys on the corners. So they do bring in Ryan Weber after that one. And uh, looks like Thornburg cannot get out of the inning. But look at Domingo up at the plate. Hitting 304, two for three. So we have a chance to take the lead. All right, Domingo, 1-1 one, one count. You're probably going to get a good pitch here. And he does. And he's going to stroke it to left field. But that is going to be... Right to Benintendi. We just can't beat the Red Sox. I don't know what it is. All right, so we got him on a 0-2 count. Let's see if we can get him chasing on an outside cutter. Do not hit the zone. Okay, there we go. All right, 1-2 count. Let's see. I'm going to go low changeup, low and inside changeup here. Let's see if he does bite on it. Nope, just out of the zone. If he walks this guy, I swear I'm going to be mad. Kalame, 2-2 count, and he swings that one low. That was in the dirt. So we got lucky on that when he swung. Oh, and we get him to swing at the high cut fastball on that one. And we get out of the ninth inning going into extras. 
And it looks like we still cannot beat the Red Sox as we do quick manage and they get the home run that time by Jesus Aguilar to walk it off. He went four for five in this game with two home runs, four RBIs, what a win. All right, let's move it along a little bit. So we play Boston again, 6-6. Six, six. Are they gonna sweep us, man? I swear, and yeah, they win. Oh, wow. Okay, we're up 7-0. At least we get one game here, 8 nothing. And it looks like Kluber was hurt during that one, but it will not affect him like that. So it looks like Shed Long, who's one of our um, good prospects, good young prospects, Corey Kluber's back. And it looks like he is going to be back in the lineup. And Carlos Rodon going for another win, 3-0 here versus the Reds. And we do recover quite nicely, and we get to the Texas League All-Star game, which we're going to kind of sim past. I kind of want the minor league system to just kind of progress as they do. So now we get into a Pittsburgh series here, and we end up losing that one 6-2. Wow, losing 2-3 at home. Actually, that was uh, a two-game set. So now we have the Texas Rangers at home. Kikuchi on the mound, and I wish this was a no-hitter, but it's just a shutout. We end up getting the victory in that one. So we finished this month of June 54 and 28. How did we lose this two-game set to the Pittsburgh Pirates? I guess they're pretty decent. 44 and 35. That's a decent team. Uh, but let's look at the standings here. So we're now 12 games up on the Athletics, and it looks like the Rangers are pretty far behind as well. I mean, everybody's struggling in our division except us. So I think we got this one in the bag unless we just collapse, but there's still plenty of season left. I don't want to say it. I don't want to jinx us here. All right, let's get to this all-star game here and going up against Texas, uh, LA uh, Angels, and then the Oakland Athletics. So that Athletic Series is a big one. Let's just sim to that one and see if we get hit with any critical situations going in that series and it looks like Texas beats us seven nothing here and we actually lose at home two of three as Logan Gilbert one of our pitching prospects does get hurt we will move past that it looks like Francis Martez does get traded to the Colorado Rockies for Jacob Barnes and Ryan McMahon that's just a normal trade to me that's not really breaking news but okay all right, so now we make it to this Oakland Athletic Series. And the only reason I said it's a big series is just because they're in second place. They're still, I mean, is that like a 17 game? No, it's like a 12 game lead, but still ahead of them by quite a bit. Let's just see if we get in any critical situations with them. Uh, I mean, it's a 12 game history guy for Manny Pena, actually. So we actually win that one two to one. So that's actually a pretty good win. Let's see what we get here. Nine, nothing. Corey Kluber with the shutout. You know what? Let's just. No, let's send this one. He's probably going to get it anyway. Yeah, 9 nothing, And we're almost about to sweep them. And we get to the Futures game. You know what? I might hop into this Futures game because I usually play this every single season. Let's just see. So it looks like in the Futures game, we only have two guys. One is actually Enrique Julio, who's actually our eight potential first base and we drafted two seasons ago. He's now 24, but he doesn't even have any stats at all. I believe he's in single A. I'll have to check that after this game. But he is uh, 63 overall and progressing quite nicely. He's only 24. And uh, also Nathaniel Lowe. That's who it is. He's B potential now, 71 overall. He's pretty good, to be honest. 26. He's actually progressing quite nicely. Let's just see what he can do in this game. I'm actually just going to start. I don't know why I changed that. But I'm actually going to start Enrique Julio just to get him some playing time. And he's going to hit for this DH here. Let's see what these two can do in this game. All right, here is Enrique Julio's first at bat. This is my first time actually playing with him. A potential, he is a power hitter. And let's see what he can do in his first at bat. I am playing with quick counts here with Pint on the mound. Let's see what he can do. And he is going to clobber one down the right field line. That is going to reach the wall. Doesn't have the greatest of speeds. I'm actually going to send this guy. Actually, I shouldn't send that guy. I'm going back to third. And he's going to be safe going back into the bag a double here for Enrique Julio. All right, so here is Nathaniel Lowe. One, one count, let's see what he can do. And he gets a nice pitch to hit. He's gonna drive it deep, but that is probably gonna be caught. That is a pop fly, easy out. All right, Enrique Julio is up for his second at bat. Remember, he just hit that one down the right field line. Now he's got guys on the corners here with one out. Hopefully not a double play ball here. And he does clobber one deep to right or center field, and it's going to be run down 
accidentally did not tag up on that one, but I'm going to go back and see if I can tag 91 speed guy on third base, and he is going to be safe. So we do get the sacrifice fly on that one. So Enrique Julio with the first RBI of the game. All right, and Nathaniel Lowe hits one deep to left field, but that one's probably going to be run down. On the warning track, though, nice power. All right, one more at bat for Enrique Julio in this one. Let's just see if he can keep uh, the good hitting going. He's got a guy on second here and two outs in the inning here in the fifth. He still has the only RBI in this game with Lauer on the mound. It's going to be an inside curveball, and it's a ball. And he does hit one to shallow center field, and it is going to be run down. And that's going to be the day probably for uh, Enrique Julio. All right, I was wrong. One for two. Let's see what he does in his fourth at bat. He is in the eighth inning. 3-2 count here. Let's see if he can get on base, either a walk or a hit. And, and I do swing out one out of the zone. A little anxious there. That's an out. All right, so Enrique Julio does end up getting the only RBI in this one, and it ends up being enough. one nothing here in the Futures game. Pretty boring game, to be honest. So now at the All-Star break, we literally have double the amount of wins that we have losses. Wow, I mean, that is just insane to see how much we're dominating here in Season 4 off of those couple of signings, McCutcheon and Yelich. And Yelich really isn't even making the impact that we thought he would make. I think it's really just that jump from Paul DeYoung going into this season, hitting 296. It seems like that alone is the difference. I mean, look at him even progressing. He's gone up in potential and overall, plus three in all hitting categories. He's doing amazing this season. Wow. All right, so we did make it to the All-Star game, and it looks like Kluber makes it 8-2. and two. He is the number two in the rotation. Kikuchi makes it 11-2. and two. He is at 94 overall, having himself... The best year so far and look at this it took three seasons for him to get to this point 11 and 2 he's only had three or actually seven games look at my math six games where he had, it was a no decision and 127 strikeouts and 41 walks definitely having an amazing year at age 30 seems like that's when pitchers really do hit their prime if they're late bloomers it's around age 30 and wow, I mean, I'm pretty surprised. Look at this, Alex Colome. We were just showing how bad of a season he he was having. Somehow, I don't know how, but he made the All Star team with a 1.76 WHIP and a 3.27 ERA. I have no idea what is going on with the game there. But Kirby Yates does make it as well as a relief as a reliever. He has a 1.13 WHIP, 25 saves. It looks like he might actually beat his number from last year which was 49 he, at least he's going to be on track there but he's having a good year no idea how Colomay made it so I actually will not play any pitchers uh I guess spots in the rotation when they do get in um but I will play offense Omar Nervais does make the all-star game no surprise here he's gone up in potential at age 30 gone up in overall as well he's still progressing really really well so it's good to see him doing well. And also, Andrew McCutcheon makes it as a reserve. So he is a left fielder hitting pretty well, 288. So he must have made the team last year if he hit 300 last year and 288 this year, but really hitting really well. And he's actually hit 16 home runs this year, which is actually more than his total last season. And he actually is healthy as well. So that's a good thing. All right, so here is Omar Nervais first at bat here hitting 322 on the season facing Steven Strasburg like I said I am using quick counts here just for these all-star games and here's a 1-1 count to Strasburg and it's gonna be a high fastball I don't know why we swung at that one two count and we are going to swing at a low pitch it's an easy fly ball Wow, it is seven to nothing here, and Omar Nervaez is up for his second at bat with a man on first base. But the NL is just giving it to the AL at this point as we foul that one off behind the backstop. But man, this is incredible. So I usually, you know, the AL does pretty good in All Star games, but this is horrible. 
Here is a hit to the left center gap, though, and that one is going to fall in short center field, and we are going to advance the runner to third base. I'm not even sure who that was on uh, first base that time, but we do get the hit. So we are going to bring in Andrew McCutcheon here to pinch hit for Mookie Betts in the sixth inning, and let's see what he does in his first at bat. He's probably going to get two in this game as he swings that one out of the zone on that pitch right there. And he is going to probably ground out that time. Yeah, that's an out. All right, so let's get a hit for McCutch in this game. And he's got a two and one count. So guys on first and second, we did trim the lead. Two to seven now. Let's see, facing Hader, and he is going to hit one to the right center gap, and that one is going to score two. Let's go to three with McCutcheon as well, and I doubt he's going to get, he's going to be safe on this one, but, oh, yep, he's out by a mile. So the NL does go on to win this game 12 to four off of 15 hits to the AL7, as our guys actually do get a hit. Andrew McCutcheon goes one for two, and Omar Narvaez goes one for three. So not a bad showing from our guys. I don't even know how our guys did pitching. So Kluber pitched an inning. He got a strikeout, and then Kirby Yates came in and gave up a run, it looks like. It must have been a home run because he has a nine ERA. One innings pitch, I mean, not bad. All right, so we do lose that game 12-4. to The AL loses to the NL. I'm glad it does not decide the home field advantage anymore, but we are 61 in 31 i think next episode we will get through july and august and then we'll end the season with a september walkthrough as we will want to close out this division i think we are in the driver's seat right now 61 and 31 let's just look at the rest of the league we might have actually the best record no the braves actually are 61 and 30 they played one less game but it's still a better record cardinals 52 and 39 on top of their, their division dodgers 56 wins Nationals have 54, so there are still a lot of good teams. Yankees have, even have 58. They're on top of the AL East now. What happened to the Rays? They were on top. Now they're seven games behind, so that definitely took a turn for the worse for them. The Twins are on top of the AL Central. They made a ton of moves in the offseason, and then, of course, us. We are on top of the AL West. So, yeah, that is going to do it here in this episode. Let's just look at our pitching really quick, really good two losses by pretty much our top four starters with Helixson as well six and six Salazar six and two as well I mean this is this is this is flawless for us our relief pitching actually is letting us down a little bit as I don't know how Colome made the all-star game but he did and one seven six whip I don't, I don't know if that's a glitch in the game or what but he definitely should not have made the all-star game so that's gonna do it here in this episode make sure to hit that like button hit subscribe if you're not Stay tuned. Let's get it. More Seattle Mariners coming up. Let's get it. Let's go.